We're not even halfway through the year and 2023 has brought some major transits. Most of them we've already seen, but the next biggest one that we need to talk about is Venus retrograde. On June 5th, Venus, the planet of love, beauty, relationships, and style is going to enter the vivacious sign of Leo. Leo is a fire sign. It's dynamic. It's It rules the heart. It's all about expressing what is in our heart. It's all about passion. So Venus and Leo is really going to sizzle things up a little bit, and it's going to encourage us to take some bold risks with our style. I always love Venus and Leo as a transit because I always find the best earrings. I always find like fun outfits that I wouldn't otherwise normally maybe buy. I tend to gravitate. I love color, but I tend to gravitate towards like blacks and things like that. Um, so yeah, I tend to buy like really fun clothes during Venus and Leo and not a shopper, by the way. It's just that this transit encourages you to take those risks. And if something excites you, you might be more inclined to do something about that. Um, We'll be talking a little bit more about that momentarily, but typically Venus is going to spend about a month in any given zodiac sign, but we get four months of Venus in Leo because Venus is going to station retrograde in Leo on July 22nd. It's going to station at 28 degrees Leo in 36 minutes, and it's going to retrograde back to uh, 12 degrees Leo on September 3rd. So let's break down some of the characteristics of this upcoming retrograde and some other things that we can experience while Venus is in Leo. So in terms of essential dignity, uh, Venus doesn't have, um, I mean, for the most part is peregrine in the sign of Leo, meaning it doesn't have a lot of authority in the sign, nor is it in bad shape either, nor is Venus really challenged in the sign of Leo. So it's fun. We get to, like I said, we get to take a little bit more of a risk while Venus is in Leo, put ourselves out there, see what happens, and yeah, have some fun with it. Okay, so let's take a look at the chart for a moment. So when Venus enters Leo, she's joining Mars in Leo. This is very exciting um, because also we think about Venus and Mars as our relationship planets. That's one way that we like to think about them in the collective. And the interesting thing here is that Venus typically would move faster and catch up with Mars. And we'd have this beautiful kind of hot and sizzling conjunction there where the lovers meet, the lovers embrace, if you will. But it never happens, as you'll see as we kind of click through the days here. Venus will catch up to Mars. It will look like Venus is gaining on Mars and that the connection is going to happen, that everything's going to go as planned. But then Venus starts to slow down to go retrograde. So that's going to that's going to happen there right around um, right around July 10th as Mars begins to enter Virgo. We see that the planets get within three and four degrees of one another. But right around the time that Mars enters Virgo, we start to see a larger distance between the two planets of about five degrees. So yeah, we that's, this is around the time that Venus starts to slow down and sort of pull back and Mars changes signs anyhow. So access is denied and what we think is gonna be like this exciting and maybe even delightful experience maybe doesn't pull through. And so you want to think about, as I said in our Mars and Leo video, about what Mars and Leo has energized or irritated or created friction or kind of stirred the pot because Venus is going to be trying to smooth things over a little bit. Now, here's the thing with Venus retrograde is that Venus's job is to create cohesion. Venus's job is to smooth things over, create joy, create lovely beautiful experiences for us. Venus wants there to be a great deal of luxuriation, of enjoyment, of pleasure, of beauty. And the thing is, is that when Venus is retrograde, that kind of thing isn't always happening. I like to think of Venus retrograde as PMS. (laughs) 
you can quote me on this um, because I like to think of like all the things that we normally as as women and people who menstruate um, will tolerate through like the other part of parts of the cycle. Um, usually there's a little bit less tolerance for those things when when it's that time of the month. And I think that the when when Venus is willing to for there not to be peace, for there to uh, for us to say something about the things that have been bothering us and taxing our our inner peace for a long time, you know, Venus retrograde is basically the willingness for there not to be peace for a little while in order for there to for us to regain a sense of peace and cohesion once we solve the problem. So you see what I mean there when I say Venus retrogrades like PMS, it's like, you know, Venus is also the planet of war to the Babylonians and uh, um, like basically before um, like the Greeks, Venus had this double rulership over love and war. And so the warlike qualities tend to come out a little bit more when Venus is retrograde. So basically, whatever Mars was kind of kicking up and creating friction about, Venus is going to kind of say, all right, let's let's pay attention to the to that and let's stay with that discomfort for a little bit in order to um, figure out a way that things could work a little bit better in this area of life. So you want to look at where your Leo houses are, where your Leo house is, and that is the area where we're getting this retrograde action where we're going to figure out a new way to um, work with that area of our life and what that area represents. So yeah, with retrogrades, there's always the need to take a step back, to pull back a little bit. I always find that when Venus is retrograde, me and my partner tend to kind of focus on ourselves a little bit more. And you might find that too. You might find that when Venus is retrograde, especially in this fire sign, that there's a little bit more of an independent streak for you because there's this internal reflection of, um, you know, where, how I balance my time and energy, who I give my, my time and energy to, where it's going. And so maybe it's not your partner, but maybe it's something else. There's a tendency to maybe pull back and reassess where your energy has been going. And yeah, we get the Venus retrograde every 18 months. So we're always having that chance on a regular basis to check in and see where our time and energy is going and what are we really passionate about? And that's what Venus and Leo wants to know. What are we really passionate about? Um, so yeah, Venus also does her retrograde um, in a pattern. So the last time we had Venus retrograde in Leo was 2015. And I'm just going to kind of scoot back to the beginning because there's some other aspects I want to show you. Um, so yeah, 2015, thinking back to 2015 when we had um, the last time Venus was retrograde in Leo. And it was during that time that the Marriage Equality Act was packed, passed. And, and that's talking about here in the United States. And so a lot of people are nervous about the how that act will continue to stand through this Venus retrograde as it was passed during a retrograde. Uh, many astrologers agree that it's possible that that act could be in jeopardy during this next Venus and retro Venus retrograde. So fingers crossed that um, this movement to take away um, the sanctity of rights for many individuals in this country. Um, let's let's hope that it doesn't touch that. Let's hope that that act can stay preserved. But that's just something that many astrologers, including myself, are keeping an eye on. So some other things that we will want to look at um, with this Venus retrograde is, um, first of all, there's going to be three squares with Jupiter. The first one is going to be here on June 11th. Jupiter conjoins the North Node and is in a square with Pluto. Obviously here, at, by this date, June 11th, Pluto has already retrograded back into Capricorn. But when Venus first enters Leo, she is immediately going to oppose Pluto in Aquarius and start to square. So we're activating this Pluto-Jupiter-Pluto Jupiter, square here along the nodes. 
Um, currently, as I'm recording, there's um, a talk between President Biden and the Speaker of the House to negotiate the debt ceiling and what to do about that. And um, myself and many of my colleagues have, have been talking about Jupiter on the North Node, as well as Venus conjunct the North Node and Taurus in the Aries ingress chart and how it looks like they will raise the debt ceiling looks like that. Um, I'm not sure that we'll see an economic crash at this time. Um, we do often see something of that sort when Jupiter enters Gemini. So maybe this North Node action will be able to stave it off a little bit more. Um, Venus, Pluto, Jupiter, that combination has so much to do with wealth and Pluto, like um, how to manage that wealth. And there's a manipulation factor with Pluto. And so we're manipulating the debt ceiling. We're manipulating, there's all this sort of manipulation, raising interest and things, interest rates and things of that nature. There's a lot of financial sort of manipulation with the powers that be going on here. So yeah, unfortunately and unfortunately, we won't be working with this T-square energy for the entirety of Venus's, time in Leo, it's really just this beginning um, section of the story. So this first week of June, basically, it's really going to be igniting that maybe even into the second week. But then we have this story because Venus is going to square off with Jupiter three times while she is in Leo. So the first time happens here at about five degrees. The second time is going to be um, in August, so August 21st, when Venus is retrograde. And the third time is going to be on September 17th. And Jupiter will be a lot further into the sign of Leo at that time. Um, so in fact, on on September 3rd and 4th, we get a double benefic station, Venus and Jupiter. Let me just go up that way, um, are going to both be stationing right around the same degree as one another. Let's see here. We've got Venus at 12 degrees and Jupiter at 15. So Jupiter will be stationing retrograde and Venus is stationing direct. So we have this double benefic station going on. And so this Venus-Jupiter theme, we're going to be working with really um, largely through September 3rd, but again, um, middle of September, they have that third exact square. So yeah. Venus, Jupiter, it's all the good stuff. <laughs> Maybe a little too much of it with this square action. So this Venus retrograde can be a little indulgent. And you might hear that during Venus retrograde that you shouldn't be making big purchases. And that's probably true because the thing that you might do is you might overspend. Because when Venus is retrograde, we say, that is gorgeous, I need to have it. And so I would caution you with the larger purchases in that case, but when it comes to things like clothes and jewelry and things for your home, I, I don't see the harm in it actually, because when planets are retrograde, they're closer to earth and we want to connect with that energy a little bit more. So Venus, when she's retrograde, we're going to want it even more. We're going to want relationships. We're going to want the, the object of our affection. We're going to want it. We're going to want the things that we um, that seem beautiful to us. And we may be more willing to take those risks because there's also going to be a triple square with Uranus. So that first one is going to be on July 1st when Venus is direct. The second will be on August 10th when Venus is retrograde. And the third when she is direct is going to be on September 29th. So we have this triple sort of square energy going on with Venus and Uranus. So here's the retrograde square going on here. This degree just pops out at me, 22 degrees of fix, because uh, that is where like the Saturn-Uranus square was going on last year. So this is another, this is part two of that story. If, the, if you have planets in that range of degrees like between 25 and 20 of the fix this is part two of the story and this is a very significant one there may be some financial illuminations going on here there may be some illuminations of what has been holding me back from 
the things that I love, the things that I'm passionate about? How do I make space for that? How do I radically maybe shift some things around in my life to reprioritize with Venus retrograde in a square to Uranus? There is something about living in the moment, living for today, um, where we can make radical changes in order to have more regular access to the things that we love and desire and find beautiful. This is also a very liberating aspect for relationships. We can have major breakthroughs. This can be really beautiful for experimentation. So if you are putting yourself out there, if the relationship is newer, this is where you take risks to put yourself out there to say, hey, I like you. What if we did this thing? Um, What if we hung out more? What if we took this trip together. I mean, this is pretty bold and living in the moment and taking a risk for today. Like this is live, live on the wild side. Like you have one life to live. So why not take the chance? So this could be a fun summer for people with this aspect. If you're in a longer term relationship, this might say, Hey, things right now are pretty stagnant. We need to do something to shake it up a little bit. We got to maybe dish the kids at home and take a trip together, or we need to, um, we need to take acid. (laughs) I don't know what it is, but, uh, or we need to open up the relationship. I don't know, like live your wildest dreams, let your imagination fly, whatever this is, it's saying, you know, we need to take a risk and, um, whatever it is, it's, it's something that maybe someone with that Venus and Leo feels really passionate about trying or experimenting, or maybe there's a question mark of, I don't know what to do, but we need to, we need to try anything to kind of shake, shake it up a little bit. So this Uranus is going to bring some exciting discoveries there, and it may not be the com- the most comfortable thing. All we know is that something needs to shift, something needs to change. Um, because it's it's a very fixed configuration. So all we know is that we need to try something. Maybe we're both uncomfortable, but we both need to try something in order to kind of shake things up and make it more fun. Uh, so yeah, this would be a really great time to do exercises that build um, a little bit of hotness, a little bit of friction, a um, little bit of adventure. And yeah, there may be something about just like taking some affectionate risks here with Venus and Leo being a very affectionate sign. So yeah, this is a very indulgent, maybe a very sensual configuration with Jupiter in Venus's sign in Taurus. So yeah, there's a tendency to live in the moment and put yourself out there and say yes to all the things that the heart desires, basically. So Venus is going to hang out in fiery, dynamic, passionate, and expressive Leo until October 9th when she enters Virgo. She's going to continue to chase Mars. They aren't going to meet up until February of 2024 when they both align again in Aquarius. So (laughs) we'll be paying attention to that aspect a little bit more. Um, But yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that kind of shows up around how we think we're going to get something that we want and then it doesn't quite happen. But Venus finds a way to create peace and happiness in that Leo house no matter what. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out for you and how it plays out in the world. And that was your slightly extended astrology shot of the day. And I'll catch you next time. Bye. Thanks for tuning in with me today. For more astrology in your world, you can connect with me on all platforms at Astro Catherine. You can also book your reading with me at katherineurban.com. And hey, you may also want to join Cauldron, my monthly astrology meetup.